First episode of Talking Horticulture, and uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, a career in horticulture and uh, the different routes through to getting a, a, a career or a job in the horticultural industry, uh, the challenges that myself and Michael have faced along the way, um, and just maybe kind of some of the stumbling blocks that may, may be put in your path and how you might be able to overcome those stumbling blocks. Um, do you think there's a, a good um, scope to have a horticultural degree in Ireland, Michael? Yeah, I think so. Like, you know, I suppose like any career that you take on, it's it's never going to be straightforward and it's not just going to fall into your lap. Um, and I think that's one misconception that when I started out uh, in our first year of college that I had this misconception that I was going to do this degree and the day I finished the course I would walk out into a job and that was it was all going to be excused the pun but roses in the garden and that is one thing that it definitely was not and especially for myself who came straight from leaving certificate into uh, straight into third level education so it was a big step and, a, and a, that, that was the start of a steep learning curve at it. Um, but there's definitely more room for expansion in the degree area of it in Ireland. But also there needs to be more appreciation of that qualification, I think. Yeah, I'd agree with you because um, like we, we both uh, came the same pathway through leaving search straight into third level did four years of degree course and came out with a, a shiny level eight degree and then thinking we're going to fall into a, a, a ex exceptionally well-paid job and have a heap of lads underneath us to uh, to manage and uh, yeah i think it, it we kind of had to take a, a pinch of reality and realize that the degree isn't everything like um your your um your experience and your um, the, the the years you build up in the industry are just as important as your kind of um, the what you learn in college. Um, but I think I think it, it is there is a lot of kind of um, more opportunities now compared to when we started um, uh, in the industry nearly ten years ago. Would you agree, Michael? Yeah, like I do. I think um, I don't know what the best way to put it is, but that when when you when when you do a course in engineering or maybe in architecture or just just as an example, you know you can walk straight into that position. Whereas you know when I found that when you've done a course in horticulture, be it uh, you know as uh, as I did a level eight at, at the time. Uh, you know, you had to build on it wasn't about having the degree when you left, it was about your level of experience and the experience seemed to play a bigger role with employers at the time than it did in your level of qualification, which was different to other qualifications where you could do you know, something in architecture or engineering as, as I said as an example and and go much more into a managerial role if that's what you were aiming for. So it's fair to say, Michael, that instead of us going into college at 18 and doing four years, we could have walked into the same role without going to college. And we're only really reaping the benefit of our, of our degrees now, 10 years on, where it's coming into that, that degree is really playing a, its toll in the, the jobs that we're getting now. Um, it, it, it's only, it's only we probably would have been better off doing a bit of experience first and then coming back as potentially a mature student as a, a, for the level eight later on. Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, you don't want to be, uh, I don't want to put anybody off who's leaving school and wants to go straight into it you know i did and it's been successful i've had stumbling blocks along the way and 
you know, you're going to have to work your way up the ladder as you go. That is, there's no doubt about that. You will. And it is, if you're coming into it sort of, again, excuse the pun, is green. You know, if you're coming in with, with very little experience and you're, as I was, you know, I was, um, it was a whole new world to me. So you needed, uh, as what you could describe, a crutch to prop you up to to, to so something to fall back on was the college to get me into the world of work. Uh, you know, it, it was beneficial that way, especially with the work placements and all of those things, which you know, I, I learned invaluable experience on. So, you know, it, it, there's two sides to the coin and, and it can depend on the student going in with experience to the course, as, as we know, friends of ours ha, uh, did um, it, it's very beneficial and some people you know you can move let, in Ireland we have the level 6 5, 6, 7 and 8 and many people did come from the one year level 6 and move into the level 7 and move into the level 8 which is a great starting way of doing it as well if you wanted to do the level 6 and get go, you know, leave, go off, get a bit of experience, and come back and do your level seven. It's it's a good way of doing it. Yeah, it's a good way of doing it as well. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, like I think you touched on it there. Um, one of the best things about um, studying horticulture is getting the the practical experience from the um, from the uh, placements that that we were we we went on. Like we 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 both really benefited from our, our placements and uh, we both kind of got um, job um, opportunities from doing well in those placements and uh, to be able to get your head out of the book and get some kind of get your hands dirty and be able to touch feel and, and see and get a real uh, graph for for the the job itself I think that really gave me a bit more of a hunger to say no, yeah, this is definitely something that I want to pursue going forward. Um, I found the placements absolutely brilliant. Like, Yeah, like, you, uh, you know, some people would say to you, I don't know if I'm suitable for this or if I'm cut out for it. And as we, we touched in, in, in maybe the, the start of this one or, or in our, in our uh, introduction, you know, there's so many areas that you can go into and, and it leaves... It, it leaves it, you know, some people may think I, I'm more suitable for nurse the nursery industry rather than hard landscaping. You know, I don't want to be lugging around concrete paving slabs all day. You know, it's not for me. And then other people might like to concentrate on turf grass, golf courses. And I think that's one of the good things about this as a, as a career for anyone thinking about it. It leaves them... A, a, a very broad uh, spectrum of of areas to work in is what I, I suppose I'm, I'm touching on. Yeah, it's it's kind of like saying if you were going to college to study to be a builder, that's like what studying horticulture is like. But a builder can be a plumby, a plumber, a bricky, an electrician, a sparks, a, a groundsman, a foreman. There's so many different areas of being a builder, but you wouldn't go to college to be a builder. But horticulture touches on so many different areas that it's not just, you have so many different avenues that you could branch off into, rather whether it be getting into uh, golf courses, getting into um, into the nurseries, getting into the councils and working in the parks departments, getting into hort therapy, uh, flower arranging, education like there is so many avenues um, and it's it's a very broad course to be fair yeah it is a very broad course and and the thing like like i did having studied it originally and then moved on to specialize in one area which for me was was arboriculture and and i think that's what what i, I wouldn't have discovered my my love for for trees and and for working with trees and timber without having done the degree in the first place and and that's what i would hope that other people would find that they would you know they could study it at, at any of the levels we mentioned there and find that they'd go on to 
study an, an individual discipline on its own then um, which which can be much more beneficial as well because you're a specialist then in your field yeah like i think i think that's a very valid point like it's um i think from 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 working with uh, students who've come to work with me and um, and placement workers and stuff like that i've i've found that uh an apprenticeship pro- program for um horticultural um students would be a much more valuable method of teaching um teaching horticulturists going forward and um, get the on ground experience and be be taught by a, a a mentor about the the ins and outs of the industry and getting the the real kind of knack for the job. Um, I feel like there there isn't a, a, a horticultural apprenticeship um, program at the moment, but it's something that I'd be keen to see come into the country. As I feel that we are, if you get into this industry, you are an outdoors person. Like it's something that if if you're afraid of a shovel or a spade, you're not going to last very long. Um, it's something that you need to really get a uh, get a feel for and um, understand what's what's involved in a career in horticulture. Yeah, like the um, in, in in the past couple of months, and I know there's still, I know there's students have have signed up to it, so it's it's kicking off. Is is the apprenticeship in in arboriculture to put you out working with an arborist or a tree surgeon, um, and and that's kicking off down in I think it's Galway. ETB, um, and and so, like you're saying, you know that that's going to be a hands-on sort of a thing. You know, you're going to do it like a mechanic or or anything. You're going to do your your you're on the job and you're off the job, and you're you're going to get far more valuable experience than than sitting inside looking at someone telling you how how to fell a tree. You know, you're going to see a guy with serious experience actually doing it. And then get back into the the training the training board, and they're going to, you know, show you the the theory based side of it as well. So, like Stephen is saying, that that's probably going to be, you know, it's probably another area that they could open up for somebody who wanted to start out and work their way up the degree course levels then as well. And I suppose you could open that that up to mature students as well, because I, I suppose you. Like myself, I suppose you, you see many mature students coming through it, and it's 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 a great subject, you know, that people like to, you know, they might be doing it as a hobby, and they think, I'd like to go and study this now. I've I've been working at something else all my life, and doing this as a hobby, and now I want to come back and study this, which I think is brilliant too. Like that's that's fantastic. Yeah, like it's something that um, that that. Uh, I was sneered upon by my peers when I, I chose the horticulture um, in, in kind of junior cert, leaving cert area that they were kind of laughing at. Jesus, is that what you want to do? It's, um, is that, is that a, a viable career um, path for you? And I kind of said to them, well, it's, I, just, I just love what I do. And uh, it's, I always made the comment that it's something that they mightn't be interested in now, but it's something that everybody at some point in their life is going to get involved in is interacting with nature or coming outside or doing their garden and they, they might be in their 40s they might be in their 50s they might be in their 70s they might be retired and they'll come back to it and it's a it's a really rewarding kind of um, not only a career but a hobby like it's it's um it's 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 it's, it's many links with kind of the the wellness movement and the kind of the mental health kind of um, aspect of it that you're you're outdoors you're working with nature and it's um it's very rewarding in that respect um but i think it's uh it's something that everybody will come to their life eventually is is working outdoors in the garden like yeah like i remember when i was in as you said there when i was finishing school i remember uh I remember people saying to you, what are you going to study? And I said, horticulture. And at the time, you know, horticulture, what the bloody hell is that? And people used to say to me, hey, be over at a friend's house. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, horticulture. Oh, flowers. You're studying flowers. I said, well, no, there's a bit more to it than flowers. So you're going to be a florist. No, I'm not going to be a florist. 
well, what are you doing then? And, and it, you know, getting into trying to explain half of the stuff that we're after doing there in the past 10 minutes, you know, that was kind of falling on deaf ears. But, you know, I suppose it was, it was, uh, it was frowned upon as a, as a career choice. It was seen as, uh, that Jesus, I, I don't think I'd pick that. Studying flowers, leaves and, and old plants it's, and stuff, you know. It, it's true though, like we're, we're, we're years and years behind um, where, where our nearest neighbour is the UK in terms of the horticulture industry in the UK, in terms of the, uh, the amount of money they put into the, the industry on a whole and the, the amount of educational avenues, whether it be full-time, part-time, um, as online courses, there's so much more scope for people to get into the into this kind of sphere, um, and I think we're we're kind of we're slagging behind at the moment. We're coming we're coming up on them, but we've still a lot of work to go. I think we're a bit up and coming, but I think we're we're not we're not too far off. What would you think, Michael? Yeah, I think you know in some in, in some areas of it we really are far behind and I, I think I suppose me working in the in the arboricultural arb industry or, or tree surgery now I see us in some cases miles behind and especially in in our in our standards that 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 we that we work to you know some of it is just is, is so poor you know it's it's kind of gobsmacking and, and we we rely on the UK for for our British standards is what we use here in relation to trees so you know we look to them for for where the standard should be but yet we're still still lagging behind a little bit and i think that you know it's it's up to it's up to all the the, the young and budding horticulturalists that are coming along to to up their up the standards and and really rise rise bring it to a new level rise it up um and i think that 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 will happen it's just you know it's taken a bit more it's taken a longer leap over here because i suppose our industry is that little bit smaller than than the uk but we can do it i suppose and and with with the the horticultural colleges that we have i think they, they are going to be play an even bigger part going forward yeah i agree with you i think I think they are going to play, play a huge part on it going forward. And we kind of touched on earlier on about um, if you are coming into it, because the horticultural industry, like you know yourself, Michael, that everybody knows everybody, that the, you talk to somebody and you're like, I worked with him there, or he was with me there, or he worked in that council. Like uh, the, the councils in Dublin, especially um they've all worked in every single one of them and they've all worked in each other's jobs it's it's such a close-knit community um and it is expanding slowly but surely i think that's something that um uh, coronavirus has kind of uh, highlighted uh, is the the importance and the 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 need for green space or uh, immunity um space in the country for um, going forward, as as we were all kind of in our 5K looking for a bit of green grass to go have a picnic or walk around or kick a ball around, um, we, we really seriously undervalued it. And as a knock-on effect, those parks, those green spaces are all going to need to be managed in the future. And they're going to be to be managed to a slightly higher standard and to a different standard. And that's where we need to kind of have the newer kind of generation of people coming in and, and and bringing new life into the industry and try and make it a bit more uh, exciting and new you know so um yeah so i think i think the i think it's it's important to not shy away from um like saying i don't want to get into horticulture because it's just grass cutting there's so much more to it and there's so much more scope going forward it's it's slow process but you will get there in the end yeah, like I think you know, you're going to have to know how to grass cut. You know, you might think it's well, it's just walking up and down, but there's more to that too. You know, you're going, you know, and you'll 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 figure all of them things out on the way. And I think just to touch on something you said there about the the local authorities, they're going to have to, especially outside of Dublin, 
Dublin, ha, you know, they have their parks departments and and they have their gardeners, and they're they're a little more on top than than some of the other local authorities around the country. Um, and I, I think they really need to up their game when it comes to horticulture. And I think there should be more career opportunities for up and coming horticulturalists, even people, obviously people with, with existing degrees to be able to move into positions as gardeners and, and other positions in, in, in parks departments, which some of them don't even exist. To, to try and, and improve, to tie in with the, what we were saying there about the standards, to improve their standards around the country. Um, but as you said as well, not to shy away from whatever tasks you think is in front of you. Like, you know, you need to know, you need to have experience in it all. And I, I know like when we were at college, there was people that might say, I, I, I've no interest in this area. I don't want to know about this part. You can't look at it like that. You need to know all of the the subjects. I suppose if you take us when we were in college studying uh, studying maybe veg production wasn't my hot topical area, but now when I want to grow a few vegetables in the garden, well now then it pays off. I suppose so. Um, the, it will pay off. The, the, it is there is a long term goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said about the parks departments in the country, like especially when you get out of the. The, the greater Dublin area out into the kind of periphery counties of the countryside that the, the parks department is the, the park superintendent and maybe a couple of general officers that's it and uh, the, the attitude um, is to contract out a lot of the the works whether it be grass cutting or or maintenance of a park or trees or all that sort of stuff and uh, serious under um, under um, development of the parks department in, in, the, in, the, in the county councils around the country is, is, is for sure. Like I know Dublin is a bit of a different case because they have much bigger parks departments, much bigger budgets that they can afford to have your general operatives, your gardeners, your craft gardeners, up to your assistant parks, to your park superintendents, to your executive parks superintendent so like there is much better progression routes in the, in the Dublin parks it has to be said. Yeah, that's just one other thing to touch on is the, I suppose, where people think they're, where, where they will end up and what they, what they can, how they would move along. I suppose, um, when you leave college, where do you go? And I suppose, you know, you'd have to pick an area, say you pick an area that you like. So you either start, you know, you work in a nursery and you'll have to work your way up through the nursery. But, you know, there's nothing to stop you starting your own nursery. Or, or, or garden center. You don't have to be growing all the plants, but you can definitely retail them. There's nothing to stop you doing any of that. Um, and it's the same in any other area of it. You know, the, you know, you start out in, as a landscape contractor or start out working with a landscape contractor, be it in maintenance or landscape construction. And you, you work your way up because you need to, to work and get experience with these guys of how it's been done on a day-to-day -day basis. But again, nothing stopping you starting your own business doing landscape maintenance or landscape construction. And there are career paths where, you know, that you can move down along. As Stephen said there as well, local authorities, they do take on staff. If, you know, you felt that parks and gardens was your thing, the OPW, all of these places do take on staff. It might be all the time, but they will and, and they're you know that's what we're saying about it being broad like you can you can work for yourself or you can work for someone else and and you have you have all these opportunities yeah like like michael said there there's the way i see it is there's um there's three avenues of uh career paths um after you finish up on college or if you wanted to go into the horticulture industry you have your 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 public and private sector so your public being your your county councils your universities your your chaguses your um quilch all those sort of public sector bodies um then you have your 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 private sector which is your your saps your peter o'brien's your red locks your your nurseries and all that sort of stuff and then you have your, your own your own business is starting up your own landscaping firm or starting up your own um your own nursery or starting up your own 
uh, hydroponics um, uh, microgreens uh, nursery or something like that. There's, there's, they're the three kind of avenues that you go on, and each one has their their, their benefits. Um, like there is a bit of security when you go into the kind of the public sector that you have a guaranteed wage, and there is there is progression routes. Um, the, the private sector and industry when you go to like the the, um, the the bigger companies that you might be making better money um but on the same time they they fl- they 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 fluctuate and they're very much um they go when the when, when they make hay when the sun shines um but sometimes yeah. it, it doesn't um it doesn't last as long the bubble sometimes bursts like we saw in 2010 um, where a lot of people were laid off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a, that's one of the kind of risks, risk class reward when you look at pro- public private sector, um, and then like starting your own business. Like we you know, lots of people have kind of started up their own business and doing very successful. Like um, it's each their own, I suppose, Mike Luna. It is, and and if you take you know chaps that we went to college with, they also went abroad, and you know that's another thing about horticulture is that it's a, an international passport for you that you can pick up your bag and baggage and head off to new york and take up a role there with a landscape contractor as we know of someone who did you know you could we know of another chap who headed for south america and ended up studying i think it was uh, environmental management over there so you know, it's it's there's it's an international passport to go abroad as well if you if you so felt that and especially if you've left secondary school, you go and do your your degree, and you think now is the time to travel. This is a great tool to have in your toolbox to have with you because no matter where you go, you're going to find a golf course, you're going to find someone doing landscaping, you're going to find a nursery. You, yeah, and you have a passport to get into any of these places to, to work like so uh, that's someone, another someone, puzzle someone once told me when I started out uh, early days he you know I said I was doing horticulture he said like that's that's a trade you bring anywhere and uh, it's it doesn't matter what the language everybody the, the, the basic principles of the of the, the trade uh, go right around the globe um, and it's it's something that you will bring with you, like you said. It's it's a fantastic thing to do, to do, like yeah. So yeah, we've brought like you know it's 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 a two way traffic because we have many people working over here who have come from abroad working in the horticulture industry here, who are much the backbone of our industry, and and I can think of a couple of of, of good nursery growers here as well you know who take on many many places uh, many many people from abroad every year um, you know so it, it it works both ways and i think that really emphasizes the point of of what a, an international an international uh, subject or an international degree that you that you will carry with you that that's the brilliant thing about it you really have to um love what you do though really like you really there has to be a real desire to the work in the industry michael would you agree like you, there is a, there has to be a, a genuine hunger to put up with the the seasons and working outdoors like uh, an example for you that and um, i could nearly say that throughout the summer every week someone will come up to me and say i love your job oh i'd love your job it's the best job ever Nobody comes up to me in the winter time and says when it's December and it's minus four and snowing. No one says I want your job then. Like, um, you have to kind of really be able to take take the punches in terms of working with what weather throws at you and be in in for the good and the bad. Yeah, you got to like you know. I, I don't think there's anything more tedious than looking down a a, a large herbaceous border or a large bed with a rock of weeds ahead of you thinking I have to crawl down along this and pick all of these out of this you know or you have a lot of edging to do and and you know you're looking down along you just have to edge the whole way around this I'll never see the end of this or digging over a bed you know there's it's it's you know there's manual labor in it it's not just going to be all sitting on a right on lawnmower 
a steer thing about it, you know. So you, you kind of want to be into a bit of a bit of manual labor on that side of it. Um, to to and, and then as you said, you know, there's cold mornings and you get up and, and it's bitter cold and you're out in it, or it's you get an absolute drowning somewhere, you get absolutely soaked, and then you reap the rewards on the summer days when it's when it's nice out. I suppose that's uh. Yeah, like it is. It's, it is. It is nice. It is nice when it is nice, and it is like you just have to take those days and and see. like I I could tell you the good days over the bad days. Um, definitely, like there's there's far more good days than there is bad days. But um, if you were going about it again, Michael, if you were catapulted back ten years um, to back into your kind of coming out of leaving cert, like would you would you be doing anything different? Um, in terms of think. mistakes you made, or would you would you try something a bit harder, or would you do something different? Or I often thought that when I when I left college, that uh, I would I could have went on and done the masters then instead of instead of doing it at a later date as I did. But then I I thought about it and I thought no, uh, I I was quite happy to leave college for a while get a little bit of experience and come back at it again so i suppose uh, uh, some days i i always i often I, I i should have left school and went out and started working in the industry and then started the degree but then maybe i would have got so settled in my career in, in you know i was working in it that i might have found it hard to come back and sit study then you know and to get my head into the books so if you're someone maybe that as i did a little bit struggled with that it, it may be an easier transition to go straight from from the books of secondary school into the books of college because you might find it hard to come back and, and try and concentrate on it when you've got a taste of the outside world as such what about yourself was would, would you would you change anything or would you stay the way you are yeah no i, I think I'd, I'd still probably go the same way um i probably echo what you're saying there in terms of go straight from the level eight into a master's I haven't done a master's yet i know you're doing yours um but i feel the longer i, I i'm going to leave it from doing my level eight the harder it's going to to get back into the swing of things um, so yeah, that that's something that I probably does kind of. There's someone nagging me saying that I should 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 go straight into doing it after your level eight and maybe get it done and dusted, and um, because you're finding that seems to be the case now in other industries, especially in the construction industry, that the the your, your your degree isn't enough now. It's 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 what you do after your degree. Your master's is is the really kind of. Um, uh, where you kind of progress and go forward, and uh, it seems that's the way across the board in all in all industries that the, everybody's getting a degree now, and it's it's what you do afterwards will will really define you. Yeah, I think you know, it, it, I think this industry here will always be about your experience. It'll always be about and, and it'll always be about where where you are, and people will always seem to fall back to what you worked at rather than what you qualified in for some reason um, and you know I suppose in one sense of the word to me that has has paid off more than more times than I could even dare to compare of where I could have seen someone who uh, uh, maybe not everyone would be too happy here in this but yeah, I've seen someone who's come straight out of college and just decided that they come straight out into a middle of a a, a, a group of lads who've been at it for years and, and have no clue about what has happened whatsoever. Absolutely, totally out of their depth. Um, and you could have a guy who's been doing that there for 20 years with no qualification and he would just run rings around this person. So, you know, experience is definitely key to, to, and especially, uh, you know, a, a guy I, I, I worked for always said to me, don't go out and tell somebody what to do unless you've done it yourself. And I think that definitely rings true for me anyway. I'd never go out to somebody and say, tell them 
try and tell them what to do unless I've done it myself. So yeah, because I, I you can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's it's something that you need to you need to earn a earn respect in the industry a lot as well. Like it is, a, it's something that you need to get the stripes in your shoulder by doing the hard graft, doing the labor, doing the the, the nitty gritty jobs that you you might have turned your nose off when you were in college and just kind of learned them, master them. And then people will re- re- respect your opinion on that because you've you, you've you've done it. You've found out what mistakes you've made in the process, and you better yourself. And then people will respect you for giving your opinion. If someone, if you have an opinion on how someone's doing it, or uh, would like to change how they might be doing it, um, so I think yeah, respect is a big part, definitely. Yeah, you haven't just read it in a book. You know, you've you have the actual you've the first hand experience of it. And as you said, you will earn a different type of respect because you will have the experience of it on the ground, but you will also have the qualification. So you will have a a much different level of respect from people who will say, oh, this this guy knows or this girl knows what she's on about. These, these, you know, these, I, I can trust these people, especially if you're going into, if you're working for yourself, you're going into somebody's house to do work. Uh, you can these people i can trust these people with with their level of knowledge mm. or you're you're advising someone on on a plant condition or a, pr- a plant problem or you know these people have the experience that that it's not just something they read and and i think that's that's super important yeah no it is super it is really really important um and just like yeah, just coming there at the time there now to finish up but uh if you finish up with one sentence, Michael, of like, um, what is the what's the best thing about working in the industry, in your opinion? Like, what 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 makes what makes you get up in the morning that that someone might want to hear to say, well, that's I'm going to go and do a, a career in horticulture. What what gets you up in the morning? For me, it's working outside. Is, is super rewarding on, on any sort of day, whether it's it's a frosty morning or a sunny day. I, I, I love that. And, and strolling through nature, if you're doing a tree survey or that sort of thing, I love that. And the other thing is looking back at a job after you've done it. You start out, whether it's landscaping or you're pruning trees or you're doing anything like that, cutting a hedge, looking back and you see it was a mess before you started. And when you finished, the reward is there for everybody to see. If you fix a car or you you engineer something, it might be hidden behind a wall or under a bonnet. No one can see it. And someone said to me one time, if you plant up a roundabout full of bed and plants, everyone driving by gets to see it. And I think that is super rewarding. Yeah, I fully agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's... it's, uh... It's it's really it is a really re- rewarding kind of a job, um, and something that kind of I always tell people is is the the unpredictability of the job that you you can't predict what you're going to be doing on any given day. Um, like uh, for example, a couple of years ago, um, we were throwing the curveball of having hurricane ophelia the beast from the east and the worst drought in 30 years or so and um, all within the space of 18 months and that brought so many different, different challenges that we weren't expecting the year before and um, and to say that every day is going to give you something different something mother nature is going to throw something at you it keeps you a bit more excited it keeps you on your toes um, and that you don't you don't know like neither of us know what we're going to be doing next Wednesday like we we could be doing something totally different that there could be a storm coming in over the weekend and we might be doing something totally different and that's something that that really kind of keeps me excited is the unpredictability of it and that you, you nothing set in stone that you just take what's given and you just deal with it as, as you go along yeah I think so I think that's that's a good summary of it so that's kind of a fairly good synopsis, Michael, about uh, what the career, a career in horticulture might 
entail for 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 people who might be uh, looking at going down this industry and um, look we hope that yeah. um we 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 helped a few today or we hope we haven't put you off no we don't I want to put have... it, we, you know <laughs> yeah everyone's at home go just cancel cancel that cancel that uh cao out, jesus did, out, did you hear them too quick. lads they're, yeah. they're talking absolute rubbish get cancel that quick quick no I, get I, away from us we would we we we, we we i wouldn't for a minute like to think that somebody would like change it just because something we said like there is far many ben- far beneficial greater... greater days than there is uh, bad days I think I definitely if, if someone listens to this and if one person listens to this and they sign up for the course then that's a win for me I've said I've, I've done something right to uh, to encourage one person to it and I and and maybe uh, maybe you know it, it'll uh, it spread or and that one person might turn into two so you know that's, that's a positive that's, that, that's what we want to get out of this so um, so I think that kind of wraps it up. Um, yeah. Just we'll be coming back with our weekly podcasts um, every week. Um, I think we'll be looking at biodiversity, uh, trees, arboriculture. We'll be looking at a few of the parks and gardens around the country. So um, all I say is thanks very much for listening and uh, stay tuned to um, Talk and Horticulture. Thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope we'll. Uh see you on the next the next episode and make sure to head over to all our social media accounts and give us a like and a share and spread the good horticulture news around the country talk to you the next time